first introduce yourselves to us. May I approach you and introduce myself the Absolutely. right way? Absolutely. Okay, my name is Maxine Kahau Le Leo. Okay, I want to I want to shake you guys' hands because I want you guys to know why I shake your hand. Okay. I'm not so supposed I, to shake hands anymore. Oh, come on. It's all right. <laughs> corona beer. It's not Corona Oh, yeah. so that's okay. a huge okay. out of the end. Hey, okay. Shake my hand. Okay. Now, remember whose hand you guys would shake. Okay. Yes. My last name is Kahau Le Leo. The man who fell off the horse. Don't forget that. Kahau. Kahau. Okay. I get three minutes. Yes, ma'am. That's all. All right. Here we go. <laughs> Taking our rights. Why I shake your hand is because on July 17th, I was one of the kupunas that got arrested on the access road of the Department of Hawaiian Homelands. So now you know, and you felt my hand as being an arrestee. So your rule of law does not apply to me, nor any Hawaiian on our homestead land. So whatever resolutions that you folks did not make, that you assumed to make, feel my hand, yeah? 38 of us got arrested for desecration of our Mauna Awa Kea. That's who I am. I'm a kupuna. That's who I am. So whether you folks make this so-called rule or resolution, it does not apply to us. Like Hang said, it's an access road that belongs to us. I'm a lessee. I have Hawaiian homes. I am on Hawaiian homes. And that road belongs to me. Not any of you. It doesn't. <coughs> we are not against science. We are not. I don't know why this whole war entangles that us Hawaiians are against science. We're not. We're against the desecration of our water that contains in Mauna Awakea. That water feeds me who lives in Kamuela, Hawaii. That's what I am here for. So if you guys come up with some kind of resolu resolution, or whatever you may call it, remember who shaked your hand. One of the kupunas who got arrested on July 17th at 8.35 in the morning. And the sad part is we're still in court being treated like criminals, which is unconstitutional. We always only had a citation. That's all we had. But we're treated like criminals. So remember whose hand you shaked. Mahalo anui loa kako. My name again is Maxine Kahau Le Leo. Mahalo anui loa. I'm Jim Albertini of the group Malu Aina. For the record, I was one of the 38 elders arrested on, on July 17th on Mauna Kea Access Road on charges of obstruction. I also was one of many arrested on the Mauna in 2015 on charges of obstruction. My case and many others were dismissed in 2016 for that 2015 arrest. <clears throat> I had filed a pro se motion for dismissal based on the defense of necessity, which is to say that I obstructed the roadway of TMT construction equipment heading up the Mauna that was going to cause a greater harm than obstructing the roadway. The construction equipment would be desecrating Hawaii's most sacred temple. Let me provide another analogy of the defense of necessity on the rule of law that is perhaps easier to understand. A house is on fire and a child is screaming for help within the burning building. A person breaks in the front door of the house and saves the life of the child, but is arrested under the rule of law for breaking and entering and trespassing. Case dismissed for the defense of necessity, breaking a door to prevent a greater harm, the death of a child. 
Let me say a few things more about the rule of law. In 2016, following our arrest, the Hawaii Supreme Court ruled that the permit issued for TMT construction was granted improperly. It was issued before the contested case hearing on the permit for construction was held. The court ruled that this was improper, illegal. It was putting the cart before the horse. If we had not acted to obstruct that roadway, the greater permanent harm of continued desecration of the mountain would have been done. History teaches us the horrible crimes that have been committed under, uh, committed legally under the rule of law. To name a few, in Germany, the Holocaust was legal. Hiding Jews was criminalized. In the U.S., slavery was legal. Freeing slaves was criminalized. In the U.S., segregation was legal. Protesting racism was criminalized. In Hawaii, let me ask you this question. Was the 1893 U.S. overthrow of the Kingdom of Hawaii legal? By what rule of law? The arrests of, 2000, of July 17th have not yet come to trial. In Hawaii, it remains to be seen how the court will rule. Will continued desecrating the sacred be declared legal? Will acting to protect the sacred be criminalized? Meanwhile, there is a Hawaii, Hawaiian legal challenge over the state's illegal taking of Hawaiian homelands for the building of Mauna Kea Access Road back in the 1960s. There is still a request pending for a contested case hearing on TMT wastewater. Is that time? Yeah, your time's my, up. My question, I'll end with this. Please. Where has the Hawaii County Board of Ethics been on these violations of the rule of law. It's time to stand for justice with the Hawaiian people to protect Mauna Kea. Mahalo. Thank you. Yeah. So just one question. Is there a date set on your motion healing? Which are you referring to? You say you filed a pro se motion. Well, that was concerning the 2015 oh, arrest, see. which dismissed the case Not based on the defense of necessity. Not for this case. No, these cases are we're still being put through the meat grinder. Right, My you. trial is set for April 24th on the July 17th arrest. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Mm. Ethics are defined by as moral principles that govern a person's behavior or the conducting of activity. So in your review of Governor Ige and his administration's actions relating to Mauna Kea, Kia'i, I pose these questions to you and I urge you to search your conscience and render an honest and authentic response. Um, first of all, when repeating the narrative following the rule of law, I would like to understand what specific statute or ordinance you're basing your resolution on. Uh, when Governor Ige presented his budget proposals in December, he declined to say how much money he had set aside to defend TMT, but acknowledged he tucked away money in the budget of various departments, <laughs> and those amounts were huge. So is it ethical for the governor to hide $80 million taxpayer dollars in funding for TMT, a private corporation, and the state operating budget? Is it ethical for the legislature to play sleight of hand games with the public by being complicit in hiding and then rejecting the $80 million requested for TMT and then appropriating $15 million, which was still $5 million more than Ige's original request? Is it ethical for Governor Ige to use his executive privilege to be the spokesperson for TMT exclusively in his taxpayer-funded trips to Japan? Is it ethical for the governor to use his taxpayer-funded social media accounts to promote TMT exclusively? Is it ethical for Governor Ige to deceive foreign dignitaries by leading them to believe the state is engaged in ho'oponopono, reconciliation, and private discussions with Kia'i when no such processes exist? Is it ethical for the governor and his administration to be so disingenuous and so duplicitous they legislated HCR 37, the Reconciliation Commission on February 10th, lied about the disposition of the access road on February 14th, <coughs> traveled to Japan on February 15th to promote the development of TMT, and to lie to the Japanese government about reconciliation with Kia'i 
when no such things are included. We aren't included in any discussions, any ho'oponopono, or any reconciliation, all the while hiding the 80 million in TMT for TMT in the state budget. Is it ethical for the governor to take sides? Is it ethical for the governor to employ the violence of systemic racism by launching a sustained black propaganda campaign against Kanaka Maoli, funded with taxpayer dollars that were strategically meant to de demean, dismiss, criminalize, and demonize us, who are also his citizens, destroying our credibility as practitioners by delegitimizing our cultural practices on the Mauna? The PR spin is directly responsible for desensitizing law enforcement and the public to justify state-sponsored destruction of not only our way of life, but has also gone as far as to promote state-sponsored violence against us personally and collectively. And in closing, I again urge the Commission <coughs> to search your conscience and render an honest and authentic response <coughs> to these things. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, I have just I have have Yes. Just one point of information. The state of Hawaii has a state ethics commission yeah. and they govern all state employees such as the governor mm -hmm. if, if he's called an employee or right. point the nominee yeah, we just deal with county employees well but you're questioning the governor's law uh, enforcement of law you're not you're not talking about the mayor or the county's enforcement of the law, rule of law you're speci specifying the governor's um, application of the law in your resolution Resolution um, is still in draft form. It's not, it's not been passed. It's, we have no jurisdiction. It's under well, if you have no jurisdiction, then why would you? Our, our request is to investigate. Investigate. Our suggestion is to try to clarify and investigate and get the facts together and get opinions. So you have, in effect, become a kind of hearing, initial hearing, that could be part of that process. Okay, we are not here to advocate any side at all and no decision at this time well and if you're my my point with my testimony and it has been my point is that if you're investigating lawlessness then you in, need to investigate all of it and not only one aspect of it and that's why my testimony is brought forward the way it is okay thank you aloha. aloha i've been here before and i can't believe i'm still here I'm Dr. Noi Noi Wong Wilson, and I'm here to once again address uh, number seven on the uh, agenda item. Uh, I want to just make a couple of statements. One is I find it very challenging um, that this fishing expedition is still going on when we have no draft uh, to speak to. And I, I really don't understand your process in just ask, <coughs> putting an agenda item on your um, on your agenda that calls for a resolution or a possible resolution regarding um, perhaps ethics violations, what you call the rule of law, and you expect citizens to come in and just sort of shoot at a wall. Provide you with what? I have absolutely no idea how this process works. I've never seen this process work this way. You're going to respond to me? Yeah, yeah. To oh, clarify, is it apology. part of my time no, or do I get time. extra time? No, no, no. We'll stop right time. Okay. All right. So, yeah, to clarify for everyone's uh, information, so right now is a discussion phase as far as the drafting of a resolution. So, if or when the board decides to pass a resolution, that draft will be available for the public for comment at a future hearing. So, today it's still in the discussion phase, and, and the board welcomes input from the public. And that's why it's gathering information as far as hearing from the public as far as what it wants to put in the resolution. So well, you're right, there is no resolution to comment on yet. Um, that's still being, as, as, <coughs> as Sunday Max said, it's still being drafted. So there will be another opportunity if the board decides to move forward. And we'll be back again. Yeah. So <laughs> let me, okay, you can resume my time. Mr. Chairman, may I yes. add one more thing? Uh, at the last meeting, I specifically asked Mr. Robinson to read the first draft and it was read to the public at the last meeting um, and and we have been working on trying to uh, correct the, the draft um, so the draft that we're talking about does not talk about the governor it specifies county employees it, and, and so and it's all part of the public record uh, 
Okay, so okay. the draft that so you read is available to the and, public? And it was read verbatim last meeting, and it's going to be modified. Okay, thank okay. you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. It, well, the process that you laid out is quite difficult for all of us, and that's why I think you're listening to all kinds of testimony. I don't think people really understand uh, how to testify specifically for what may or may not be in your draft. And I will tell you, I wasn't here when that draft was read, so I apologize if, um, if I'm <coughs> unaware at this moment. But I do want to make a few points, okay? One is to please make sure, as uh, Anna Navahine just, just uh, mentioned, that you indicate exactly what statute or ordinance or, or law is being violated um, by this ethics um, um, inquiry. And secondly, if you're looking at just county employees, which is probably more in your jurisdiction than the state, I would ask you to also look at the way your own officers are treated on the day that we were arrested on July 17th. Um, and, and this is probably along the personnel issues of uh, being provided adequate food, adequate rest fa restroom facilities. They were urinating in bottles because there were no facilities for your own employees who were stationed there for a number of hours while we, I was one of the kupuna, uh, was being arrested. They, the subsequently, officers who were perhaps on the Mauna for, for months, um, doing nothing, um, but spending, getting paid overtime um, for harassing the general public and the kind of facilities that they were provided. Because as you know, um, there are very few, if, if any, public facilities up there. So I think your own employees were treated rather harshly. And I find it kind of interesting that um, we, Mauna Kea protectors, would be sitting here um, speaking on the same side, perhaps, as, as uh, Hawaii County law enforcement over this issue, which I think is kind of a waste of time, to tell you the truth. Uh, and the spending of uh, county funds and, and county resources for this fishing expedition is, is really a waste of time. And you can, should consider just letting it go and going on to your other more important business. But thank you. Thank I, heard, you. I heard that. I'm Catherine Rosco. I'm located, I grew up in Manoa. My mother was a poet, my father was a geophysicist. Um E like hoa i meka o he nana, he pono hana ke la, e hapa i ai, i ka lahu i Hawaii i luna. Um, what I'm concerned about is that the county is not looking at the encampment at the, um, at the top of Mauna Kea and, and treating everyone the same. Uh, there was a time when the employees to the telescopes had to go through and kind of get permission from the protesters to go up. The county brought up um, gravel to spread for the kupuna. Um, and there are still structures up there that um, I don't know what we're, what's going to happen with that. But I, I do support some kind of investigation into um, looking um, how are we treating everybody equal equally up there. That's mainly what I want to see. Okay. You know, when I, when I read this, um, and when we first came in here, you said, this has nothing to do with the road and TMT. But it seems like this is exactly <coughs> what that's about. You're targeting. The Mauna Kea Access Road, we're talking about TMT. 
I mean, we're back into talking about all these things. Um, I don't really understand your authority over this matter. Um, you know, you say it's because you got some emails, okay? How many emails did you get over this? About 24. How many? What? How many? About 24 emails, plus the testimony in the session afterwards. Well, I mean, you must get emails from all kinds of people on different issues. I mean, there's, there's issues all over this island about things that are not done correctly and the rule of law and about favoritism. But I don't see you guys, you know, coming up with this, you need to make a resolution because they're not following the rule of law. <coughs> you know, there's all kind of injustice going on here. But you're picking, you're picking, you're targeting this issue about the Monica Access Road and TMT. You're not fooling anybody. This is what it's about. Ew. And I don't think you guys have the authority, you don't have the jurisdiction. And here we are again, wasting our time. So I think you guys need to go back and do some homework after this uh, hearing and, you know, re-look re at this issue. It's, it's, uh, it's ridiculous that we're here. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Aloha. Now, I'm still kind of mystified about how you're using this section because I've actually disciplined county employees for that section for fair and partial treatment, uh, courtesy and partial treatment. So it's kind of strange that you're looking at the mayor applying the rule of law in a jurisdiction that's not his. So I'm not really understanding that. But I want to talk about this rule of law topic that everybody seems to be discussing because that's exactly what I was been enforcing for the past 25 years before I retired. And the problem with the rule of law on Mauna Kea is that there hasn't been a rule of law on Mauna Kea for 50 years. All right? Since 1968, the state itself has been undermining and making a mockery of the rule of law by not following the laws to give advantages to a special interest group. Their primary me method of operations is, is simply to ignore the laws until they're caught. Beginning with the stealing of the lands to build an unauthorized access roads, lands that are held in a federally created trust so even the state itself has now acknowledged that they only own the asphalt and not the ground underneath it. And the chair of DHHL describes it as an illegal structure in his Senate testimony. So in preparation for, yet they arrested 38 people on it without establishing that, knowingly, knowing that they didn't own the road, they, did, they arrested people anyways. So in preparation for a second attempt, they began a massive targeted enforcement campaign to wear down support of the Kiai to deliberately suppress a first, minute, a first Amendment activity, and in the process violated Fourth and Fourteenth Amendment protections to generate st uh, statistics to criminalize the movement. They did so against the Native population that the state's own study has shown that Native Hawaiians have historically received disparate and unfair treatment by the criminal justice system, exacerbating and perpetuating that systemic racism. I made my complaint about this, and this was published in the press. It was also reviewed by the ACLU, and they concurred. A video in, was in the press of alleged police misconduct. They also deliberately withheld the details of the police reimbursement cost, frustrating the county council up until when they brought in the pre-signed agreement, in violation of the law, to hold them hostage, to take, um, in a scandalous attempt to hold them hostage for the reimbursement cost, predicated on that they accept more money for an unspecified <coughs> law enforcement uses over a five year period. So what I find kind of outrageous is despite the ethics and legal issues of what has all occurred, he specifically sees on this article by a member of the public who writes a, a opinion letter, ignoring all these other issues and try to create one in what is most likely an un unprecedented pro proactive action that you even questioned that the, if there was past precedence. An uninformed opinion gets preference in committee action, an opinion articulated by a person who describes herself as recently just moving here from the mainland to retire, gets more weight than what the native population has suffered. Ew. Ew. 
And as it happens, this rule of law is a pro-TMT and state media team theme that has been projected for months. And they collapsed it when they found out they didn't even own the road. As a, law, as, as a receiving desk lieutenant, I would have thrown those arrest reports out. I said, you guys are nuts. What did you do? Uh, but how is it that everything that the government does in regards to Monica is to a special interest advantage and disadvantages Native Hawaiians? I believe, given the totality of these circumstances, that this action is not consistent with Section 14-4C of the Ethics Code, that all persons need to be treated fair and impartial. So that's hearing both sides. And instead of flipping the spirit of this county code on its head to further compel further prosecution of Native Hawaiians, which creates an advantage for TMT. Furthermore, it's not consistent with 14-2B of standards, as this action can give special consideration to another entity. So in the previous, I'm, I'm gonna just wrap this up right here. The previous, uh, the, the December uh, hearing, Mr. Wiseman stated that all laws, that laws should not be discriminately applied. But that is exactly what the 50 year history of Mauna Kea is literally all about. And that's why you have a protest. Because as a law enforcement officer, I know when you have these big protests, there's an underlying injustice. And that is the injustice. It's a one way street. And it's a nightmare for law enforcement. The officers are sick of it. So the Kia'i, ironically, are on the road demanding the fair rule of law and justice. That's what's going on. My name is Becky Thurston, and I live in Pukapu Homesteads in Waimea here on the Big Island. I've been here 55 years, and I love this island. I love the people. I love the culture. And I'm here on behalf of my children and my grandchildren. I was here at your last meeting, and at that time I questioned your knowledge uh, base to properly form a resolution regarding the disposition of the access road. Um, and I'm pretty sure, I'm hopeful, that you now have a better understanding of the issues behind this. Um, it is very complicated, as I'm sure you know. Um, the question that you seem to be asking is, why is the rule of law not being enforced on Mauna Kea? Why? It's because the state itself has undermined the rule of law by not adhering to it for 50 years. And it's not just the state of the state, okay? Uh, I'm not going to go over the past 50 years in this testimony, but let me just say this. The rule of law has been ignored, it's been manipulated, it's been rewritten, and it's been wrongly enforced by the state, the Department of Hawaiian Homes Land, the Department of, of Land and Natural Resources, the county, and our University of Hawaii over and over again. And the bottom line is, people are sick of it, okay? That's, that's what's basically behind this. Honestly, if you wanna be tr fair and impartial, you have to look at the history. I know you wanna just focus down on the county, but there's no way you can understand it and really, I can't even imagine drafting a resolution without looking at the total history. Um, Finally, I want to remind you that I'm here out of a sense of moral obligation. I have a moral obligation to peacefully protest TMT and to protect our Aina. Um, acting out of moral obligation can be ethical. Look at the history, all right? It's not just, uh, we're just out a bunch of rabble-wousers, but we think what we're doing is an ethical response, a moral responsibility. Let me finish with this. When the rule of law has been repeatedly manipulated, rewritten, and wrongly enforced, when it does not protect cultural values, when it does not respect the Aina, we have a moral obligation to peacefully protest. In return, I believe you have an ethical responsibility to look at the whole issue. You can't just focus on one little bit. My thing is, um, throughout this whole process, you, if you're talking about ethics, the state has abused it throughout the whole process. The Kia'i and Lahui have been honest through all of this. We haven't tried to do pull the wool over anybody's eyes. 
And I know recently TMT, the board, they've been pushing for the state to um, come in strong-handed against us. And they talk about fair and equi equitable justice under the law. Yet, when you look at it, how fair was it for the state to pave, illegally pave a road and claim a land that did not belong to them? And they arrested a kapuna on their own lands. So it, when you look at everything, it hasn't been fair for us. Um, when they falsified and took out the cultural impact, um, what was it, the cultural impact, not statement, assessment out of the enviro environmental impact statement, that wasn't ethical. And, and, you know, you, they talk about 10 years of trying to get permits and all of that. There was a lot of things that was done that was not ethical. And when you go and look at the, if you guys really do the research, you, you can find so much of the things here that wasn't ethical. It's um, the money used to, uh, they, they use our taxpayer money for in law enforcement to harass us and ticket us up on Mauna Kea. That wasn't ethical. The money that the, they talked about the governor hid, that's for future abuses against us. Our own money, that's not ethical. He's using our own money to abuse us. And also it's like, where do you have a state like going against its people to protect a foreign entity. It's like the people are, are speaking out. Nobody thought it was going to turn out as big as it has, and that's a surprise to the state. So instead of listening to the people, they're finding more unethical tactics to use against us. They're making up more laws. The meeting I went to at the university um, with the regencies there, because they couldn't find a way to, to get us out of there, they started putting implementing more rules which the governor signed. And, and I mean, none of us was blind to it. We, we see those rules are basically so we can't protest up there, so we can't have peaceful assembly. It's, it's attacking our First Amendment rights. Uh, I just, I'm, I'm really puzzled about why we're here, frankly, um, and what exactly is going on. So we have a statement in the beginning of the hearing that there is no resolution. Nothing's been finished, nothing's really been drafted, it's all still in the works. And then we have a statement that there was a resolution read in full at the last meeting, a draft resolution read in full at the last meeting that people would have an opportunity to comment on, only now there is no resolution that people have an opportunity to comment on. I don't know how you put those two together. Secondly, I think it's clear that the prosecutions that are happening right now are being done by the Attorney General of the State of Hawaii. You have no authority over any state officials. You, it was pointed out this morning, there's a state board of ethics. They handle uh, complaints against state officials. You cannot tell the attorney general of the state of Hawaii who to prosecute and who not to prosecute. It's just not your authority and not your jurisdiction. And uh, by the way, I would just point out, the road is open in case anybody noticed. The road is not currently obstructed by anybody. So I don't know what the purpose of a resolution is at this point because other people have handled this matter in a way that was appropriate for their authority and their jurisdiction. Yeah. It was not appropriate for yours. You didn't have to be involved in those decisions that reopened the road because it's not within your purview. So I'm not sure why you're still struggling with the idea of, of creating this resolution. And... Um, the question is actually not whether the rule of law is being enforced or not. The question is whether your board has jurisdiction to punish public officials for exercising the jurisdiction that they legally have. So the Attorney General has the legal jurisdiction to decide who to prosecute and who not to prosecute. You're going to try and put yourself in the place of the public officials responsible for law enforcement by saying who should be prosecuted and who shouldn't. I don't think that's your function. I, I really don't know how you got there. So, anyway, I think your, your best approach to this whole question is just to back off and decide that this is not really your authority or your jurisdiction. It has no place on your agenda. You've got plenty of other important things to deal with. Thank you. Thank you. I'd just like to clarify one thing. Uh, we only meet once a month, and anything we do can only be done at a meeting when we're all present. 
Right. So the fact that the resolution comes up again in a draft form, uh, that that's because of that uh, rule that we can't we can't meet after you're, meetings and. You're talking about sunshine law, kind of. Right. Object. Yeah. I understand, but right. but how do we have a resolution that was read in full at the last meeting, but by the time we get to this meeting, there is no resolution? It's a draft. That's a misunderstanding. Yeah. That's a misunderstanding. Yeah. Well, you were the one that said there was one read in full at the meeting. Yes. Well, <laughs> the misunderstanding is uh, that what there is before us is that draft, and it's being revised. And so what the second bit refers to is there is no final resolution that we're ready to vote on. And you see, that, that will, that will uh, possibly come out of after this meeting. We'll revise the earlier draft that was read. There were uh, amendments made. Their amendments are still being processed. And then there will be a final resolution. That will be read. <laughs> can you, can you, maybe I do misunderstand. Can you clarify for me when this board took testimony on the draft resolution? The last two meetings? Yeah. The last meeting. Testimony on the resolution. There was a resolution available to the public no, to read. No, it was that many people assumed that it had been already passed and they came to testify, to express their views on it, and that was very valuable, but we had not. Uh, worked out the final wording of that resolution. So passing it out would give people the wrong idea entirely. But but it was passing wonderful. It, out it was wonderful for I think personally it was wonderful for people to come out to the session because usually we have about three people in there. Okay? So we got lots of input and we're getting more input now. We still have an opportunity to work further on that resolution. Okay. Yeah. So we thank you for your time, Mr. Yeah, Senator. thank you. Yeah. And thank you for your service. I understand it's purely voluntary, and I appreciate the fact you do this. Yeah. We welcome more people to apply and serve on the boards and commissions <laughs> in the county of Hawaii. <laughs> They're always looking for good boards. Yeah, my name is Garner de Aguiar. I'm 55 years old. I've, um, <clears throat> excuse me, native Hawaiian. I've lived on this island all my life. Uh, Regarding the history, as far as the rule of law and ethics, uh, people forget that we had a huge tsunami back in the day, 1960, I believe it was, and the astronomy program helped Hilo get back on its feet. And that's why we have an access road, and that's why we have telescopes on the, on, on the, on the mountain. Uh, regarding... Uh, ethics and the rule of law up there, uh, when the protesters protested, they did it at first legally, because protesting is legal. So all free freedom of speech and all of that. Once they escalated it into civil disobedience, that's when they broke the law. And that's when the rule of law should have been exercised. And they did it first. But then somewhere along the line, it stopped. And somehow it's resulted in a tent city up there, which is, uh, my opinion, is uh, not the greatest thing to have up there. And, uh, and yeah, for a while they were just disregarding people, people work up there. And they, they couldn't go up there for months. And the, and the rule of law wasn't supporting that. The rule of law wasn't supporting their right to work. As well, the rule of law is not uh, supporting the project's right. They, they went through all the protocols of getting their permits acquired. Where's the rule of law uh, supporting that? So. Uh, I think that needs to be addressed. I know, I know it's not the most popular view here. I know. But, you know, I, I'm 55 years old. I grew up with those telescopes on the mountain. It's never hindered anybody's right to go up there and worship for any reason. It's never hindered any of that. Culture and science can coexist, coexist on the mountain. 
uh, just got to share it. Thank you. I'm not a legal person, so all I can do is kind of talk about what I see and, and hear and feel. And to me, it seems that the rule of law has been ignored for a long time. And it's been ignored by the very people who took an oath of office to uphold it, the governor and the mayor. That to me doesn't seem right. And I'm wondering how that happened. I understand at the time it started to be enforced and then they decided it was a too overwhelming job. All I can do is look at Oahu, where they were protesting wind turbines. And surprise, surprise, when they got out there and took care of it, it went away. There was no more problem. I would like to see this be no more problem because it seems to me, and I think a lot of people, that we have been fighting with this for a long time. And it's not getting any better with time. There doesn't seem to be progress being made. It also doesn't seem that, um, that people are being treated fairly. But I would say, I don't feel like I'm being treated fairly because up until a, few, a month and a half or a month or almost two months ago, I couldn't use the public access road to get up to the mountain. I have been up to the mountain many times in the past and it's something I really look forward to. I use the saddle road all the time. I look forward to seeing the bighorn sheep and uh, um, mountain goats. And I'm looking forward to seeing what the telescope will discover about nature. And I'm looking forward to see the Hawaiian tradition of navigating by the stars continued by the telescopes that will be looking at the stars and looking for guidance and looking for help and expressing their view of the universe in their way. And I think that that's all positive and good. And I think it is carrying forward a Hawaiian tradition of the navigators. So I'm very happy about the telescope. And as soon as it gets built, I'll be very, very much more happy. I just saw something on the news today about the Chandra telescope making tremendous discoveries. Hawaii could be at the forefront of astronomy with the telescope. It will give people jobs. It will give another aspect to the Hawaiian Islands. It's not just a nice place for beaches where people can go and hang out. It's more than that. And if people have the ability to go up and look at the telescopes, they'll see that. Our time, please. Thank you so much. Thank you. Appreciate and it. thanks for being here. I just wanted to address please. before I start. Please. Please. Okay, please. before please. I get started here. Um, there has been question as to whether or not EGAY, if you guys are responsible for the state employees. I actually called the State Board of Ethics to file a complaint against EGAY. And I was told that they actually are the ones that support the state employees. So it looks like this is going to be dropped back on you guys because they said unless there's a conflict of interest, okay, they support the employees. So that's where we need to probably, that's what I was trying to raise and kind of get your attention a little earlier so we could have nipped this earlier, but yes, yeah. just uh, so you know. Yes, yeah, uh, I, I, don't, I don't believe that's a correct uh, uh, position of the, it's not the Board of Ethics, it's the Ethics Commission. Right. Hawaii State Ethics Commission. Correct. I'm very familiar with the board, it has 15 members, former judges. Right. And they handle all state employees, the ethical violations, the advisory opinions. Correct. It parallels a lot of the county um, board of ethics. Yeah. But they, they don't support any side. Okay. Yeah. yeah, they said that they were for the employees specifically unless there was a conflict of interest. So I think you got some they said they wrong. Yeah, somebody was giving me wrong information. I'm a legal secretary, so I'm pretty well aware. But anyway, I am going to be 
calling on the agenda number seven for no conservation district permit trash debris. And once again, just want to thank you guys for extending me the courtesy. I also would like to approach the you board are, you with a handout, if I could, just before I get started. If you want to just pass on and then, there you go, thank you. Please sit so that we can record this. <clears throat> Okay, and as you can see on the first page of my handout, a poll was taken that basically asked voters if a two-month extension should be granted on the access road. And as you can see, there is overwhelming support from the voters who were in favor to proceed Our, um, with uh, no more extensions. They don't want to proceed with any more extensions. Um, we we have a overwhelming turnout at every we don't have an overwhelming turnout at every event or the need to impress others by dramatic performances but i can assure you that the support is definitely there as you can see the last two pages are photos of the encampment site taken on february 12th almost a week after the windstorm in fact the kiai did not even send out a call to clean up the apala until after we had sent out our photos and videos to everyone who would listen and or pay attention i also submitted video coverage of the illegal dumping to your office earlier this week and just for the record there is a huge difference between legal desecration of the INOT that naturally occurs any time a structure or an infrastructure is built versus desecration created by illegal dumping and or squatting. Basically, Ige and Kim have enforced the law on the same land for different reasons by allowing illegal protesting versus legal permitting to occur. Even unpermitted structures and camping in Kauai was removed from the lands but not in Hawaii basically all their decisions have been inconsistent and in ethical violation in January we explained how the county and state government were violating our rights by failing to enforce the law at the TMT protest protest site to everyone in the community both equally and fairly one month later nothing had changed and once again, the Kia'i blamed their illegal dumping on the weather, even though the weather didn't stop volunteers from OMKM from cleaning up debris and pulling weeds nearby. DLNR has documented environmental damage on parcels that have been designated on conservation lands. DHHL has also removed stuck structures on their lands, regardless of whether or not they have a conservation district designation. Why is this also important? Because the Kia'i keeps saying they are protecting their religious rights. However, the First Amendment in the U.S. Constitution says that everyone has the right to practice his or her own religion, or no religion at all. It guarantees the separation of church and state. Excuse me, I would just like to give a little more time here since that we did submit the writ of a 16 page. I'm trying to get in three minutes. Therefore, therefore, yet failing to enforce the rule of law is exactly what the government is allowing to happen. The question is, do we really want to leave the next generation with more debt? No, we don't. So we're asking that you guys come forward and ask that the DHHL immediately issues notices to vacate DL Nelnar to place a, mortar, a moratorium on new additions to the TMT protest site. And I will give you this for you to continue. Thank you. Oh, please. Everybody went over three minutes. Come on, Ron. Yes, there's been a lot that's been over three minutes. Here, I'll just submit it. Thank you. But you have the red. Shame you have to Shame, win. shame. Oh, shame on all of you. Lies. Please, Lies. let's be civil. Yes. Let's be civil. Yeah. Let's be civil. No let's be civil. Yeah, no freedom of speech. But they yeah. Do. All right, it's Michael, Nathaniel. Later. No respect for the people. Yeah, no opinions. No respect for other opinions. Yeah, Michael, no Nathaniel. For other opinions. <laughs> Please, this Namo Namo is not really helping anybody. <laughs> 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 I 
Thank you for allowing me to speak today. My name is Michael Nathaniel. I was born and raised here, and I'm proud to be a descendant of Keku Haupio. I was raised in a generation where great respect of the Aina and our culture was mandatory. My parents were loving but very strict. I was raised to know the difference between right and wrong. So I had limited freedom when growing up. I was also taught to always treat others with love and respect, no matter who you were. The military took me from my home of Aloha, but when I returned, the actions and term Aloha no longer existed and I wanted to see it return. One key rule I learned as a child was to always leave a place better than how you found it. And that trashing the aina is a form of disrespecting the land, discourtesy towards others, and simply disgraceful. So if you decided to leave your opala for somebody else to clean up after you, then it was considered shame. It's not the way I was brought up, nor many others. Mauna Kea has always been a place for our ohana to go spend a day, have fun, and play. I was never told at any time that the mana was actually considered sacred. This is now a claim that the protesters are making that is lacking in both facts and legal support. The protesters are also claiming that we are all trespassing over DHHL lands to get to the Mauna. However, they fail to recognize that they must travel over DOT highways to get to the access road, and well as their need to travel State Route 200 in order to ascend all the way up to the Mauna. Without these highways, the DHHL portion of the access road would be useless. Yes, I understand Prince Kuhio had a vision to restore land and dignity to our people, and that the process has been slow in fulfilling this vision, as well as promises broken. I understand that. But to block a public road and trashing over our mountain is not going to speed up the process to undo the wrongs. <clears throat> It's also not making the protesters very popular with individuals who have been held little to pay for their unlawful actions. I'm requesting that our state, our elected representatives act with a sense of urgency to correct the wrongs that our state leaders have refused to do. Our elected officials have allowed for our rights to be violated and clouded by a gray area. Time, Time please. They have not been acting in the best interest of everyone in the community equally and fairly, and that should be closely examined. So I'm requested the Board of Ethics to do an investigation into our complaints and act upon it. We're not, only trouble, we're not the troublemakers here. The troublemakers are the people that create the behavior that causes the reaction model. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, me too with you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, wait. Okay. There we go. Okay. Good morning. Good morning. Okay. I consider myself a kupuna as well. And so I'm retired and I stay in my house for 24 hours if I want to. But today, this meeting brought me out of that house. And it takes an effort for me to get ready, as you can see how I went walk over here. Yeah. But this investigation has to take place. I'm so confused and, and tired of this telescope being delayed. I want to know what's up there. The alternative is lie down and look up <coughs> and i can learn just from doing that what god has created for all of his children on this earth 
So I've been spending my time reading the scriptures. Okay. I want you to put on record what I found in one of the verses. And I'm going to read it rather than memorize it because uh, it was kind of confusing to memorize. Number, this is from our scriptures we use at church. Let no man break the laws of the land. For he that keepeth the laws of God hath no need to break the laws of the land. And that's what Jesus Christ is saying. And not once have I ever heard his name throughout this July protesting as to invite him to help solve the problem. Because he can do anything. He's given me miracles that I would love to share with other people. But the key is, we all get iniquity. We must take this iniquity out of our lives and invite him to help us individually and collectively. But we've never did that. And I swear that if we fast and pray for all of our problems individually, he's going to answer collectively too if we all come together and ask him to help us. Because he owned that mountain. He created that mountain, Mauna Kea. And he can make that lava come out of Mauna Kea. Yeah, right. Okay? So let him come and help us. Because this I memorized in the scriptures. I, the Lord, am bound when ye do what I say. If you do if ye do not what I say, ye have no promise. So what does that say? Keep the commandments. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. I, have a, I have a question. Please, what book is, were you reading from? The, the Bible, but which book of the Bible? I'm a the, member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, and our scriptures include the Holy Bible, which is the Old Testament and the New Testament. The Book of Mormon, the Doctrine and Covenants, where I read this from, and the Pearl of Great Price. All of that is our scripture. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Tom Cumming. Oh, you're right there. I'm right there. Yeah. yeah, I didn't have to go far. So I'm I'm here today to testify in regards to agenda item seven. My concern is that there will be a determination of this board that this is not a county issue and therefore not the kuleana of this board. It is clear that the law is and not is not being enforced. This is sets a dangerous precedence that the rule of law is meaningless. This cannot stand. According to news reports, it was the Hawaii Police Department that made the call to stop enforcing the law due to the possibilities that the protesters may become violent. Not enforcing the law due to the threat of violence is really, really bad precedence. If, if I was to go out and pro uh, protest and block the road, I would expect to get arrested. Bernie Sanders in 1963 famously was arrested during a civil rights uh, protest. Jane Fonda recently was arrested five times for uh, protesting uh, climate change because she was doing so illegally. It is expected to get arrested if you are doing something illegal, even during a peaceful process, uh, protest. Yet the Saddle Road at Mauna Kea Access Road and the adjacent lands fall under multiple jurisdictions, including state, DLNR, and others. Because our Hawaii Police Department is subcontracted by the state for law enforcement, it could be argued that as a subcontractor, it's not the, PH, the HPD's kuleana to enforce the law in this instance. Because of the confusion, who is responsible for the potential <coughs> and the potential for finger pointing and misdirection, I argue that it's not the responsibility of this board to determine who is responsible for the lack of informant enforcement. It is, however, the responsibility of the board to make a determination that the law was not equally, equitably, equitably enforced, and we need this determination. 
Attempting to find who is responsible for what will bog this board down and we'll, we need a determination now, not later. I also remind this board that Agenda 7 only addresses the issue regarding why the rule of law is not being enforced on Mauna Kea Access Road. That is not to say there are other potential issues outside the lack of the law enforcement. Those issues require their own separate investigation. I beg this board to make a determin determination regardless who is responsible a determination that is solid, based on indisputable facts, then, based on this determination, we can make choices on how to proceed and ensure these ethics violations will not be repeated. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Cummings. About two rows back sat the mayor and the police chief. And both of them stated, you can check the record, they both of them stated, the county does not have jurisdiction. Both of them stated that at that meeting. When asked, both the police chief and the mayor, said we have no jurisdiction. Okay, that's two days before the arrest took place. Okay, to believe that the law wasn't in force, you got 38 right now, 38 plaintiffs before the court. I've gone to the hearing uh, on the first six, and those who believe that the county was involved in what happened, the testimony of the DLNR officer there said, the order to stop the arrest came from Honolulu. That's in it, that's in the record of the testimony. So essentially, this idea that the police chief or the mayor had jurisdiction, or you, the county ethics commission, has jurisdiction, has, in my opinion, has been cleared. They both said they don't have jurisdiction over that road. The DHHL director has said it is DHHL property. The Attorney General has said, oh no, it belongs to the Department of Transportation. Make this more fun. Call the Department of Interior, which I did. Who has jurisdiction over that road? Department of Interior said, DHHL. Who's the trustee of DHHL? Since we're all in here, we're going to follow the law. It's the law. Who has jurisdiction over DHHL? Department of Interior. If you want an opinion on who has jurisdiction of that road, in your search, in your idea of drafting a resolution on law enforcement and why is it happening or not, I suggest the commission takes your staff and go do a research on chain of title of that road. I think you're not going to like what you find, honestly. You're not going to like what you find because if you take that chain of title all the way back to 1893, you're going to see a mess. An utter mess. In fact, I will guarantee you that if you do the title search and you go back to 1893, you're going to find out that no title company would ever insure that title. I'll guarantee it. I've talked to title companies. They don't want to touch it. So my, my suggestion to the board, and hopefully we don't have a third meeting on this because I don't like coming to Hilo on a rainy day. But, <laughs> but you know, if you're going to proceed, proceed, because you know what's going on with this issue is nobody wants to say what they really believe. The Attorney General sidetracks it, the, the Mayor sidetracks it, the Governor sidetracks it, the Department of Transportation sidetracks it. DHHL right now is, is saying... Time, Would you time. stop? Would you stop, please? Ante. No, that's Ante. what you gave Ante. us, right? Ante. 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 Take it easy. Time. I'm done. I think I proved my point. Ante. Ante. Mahalo. Ante. Thank you. Right on. Right. Yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't, it doesn't help anyone.